Today, I'm going to show you five mistakes you are most likely to be making as a beginner. Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm Nauri Radwan. I am the concept artist for the channel and you are tuned to photomanipulation.com. In this video, I'm going to be talking about five mistakes based on my personal experience in this field. Also, I'm going to tell you how to fix them. So without any further ado, let's start with the video. Welcome back everyone. And as you can see here in my screen, first thing we are going to be talking about is the sky perspective. I have noticed and I have experienced myself this mistake and I used to make a lot in the uh, past. And that is the sky has perspective. And I have seen in a lot of beginners works that they don't care about the sky perspective. They just add any sky image that they find. However, if you want to be a mad painting artist, then you must care about the sky perspective. Now I have this uh, land, as you can see, uh, and we have a transparent background. And uh, here I have some images of skies. And let's start with the sky number one. Now, if I add this sky to this land, will it look realistic? Picturing the sky in different uh, degrees, it can be taken from a 45 degree, it can be taken from 90 degree, it can be taken from um, 180 degree, and this one is a perfect example. And let me just hide this land. And as you can see, looking at this guy, I can tell whoever take this shot from a 180 degree uh, from the bottom, of course, because the sky is always uh, above us. And whoever took the picture of this land uh, took it from a 90 degree. That means he was holding the camera like this. And the sky was 80 degree. And that means he was holding the camera like this. So this sky does not work with the perspective of this land. So let's move on to the next sky. Now, let's hide the land. And as you can see, whoever took this picture of the sky took it from a let's say 120 degree, uh, 120 degree, uh, 130 degree uh, or 140. Let's say if I'm going to be adding this sky to the land picture, then the land should not be uh, shown in the picture because whoever took the picture of this sky was holding the camera like this. And that means that this land will not be shown. So, so the second sky doesn't work as well. Let's go to the third one. Now, this is not necessarily uh, wrong because let's say you are not going for a realistic work or let's say you are going for a fantasy um, avatar type uh, worlds like uh, you know where this lands uh, floating above the uh, clouds. Let me, hide, let me just hide this image of the land. I don't even uh, need to tell you that whoever took this picture took it from a really high place that's above the clouds, let's say from an airplane or a uh, big mountain like mountain Everest or something like that. If you are going to add this land, you are not wrong. Um, there is some uh, mountains that can be above the sky, uh, let's say, uh, sorry, above the clouds. But if you are going to add a picture of a land that is above the clouds, then you will have to care about the rock formation because the mountains that goes above the um, uh, clouds mostly will be uh, covered with the snow or mostly you will be just rocks you will not find this flat with the grass land like this but as i said before if you are going for a, a fantasy non-realistic work then it can work and let's see this final sky this final sky will be the one what that works with this land because they both look like they were talking at 90 degree um, and the reason why I look uh, at the original sky of this original image this is the original sky that came with this land picture and compare it with this one they look the same they look they were talking at the same degree they match the perspective and for that the sky is right if you are having a hard time trying to find high quality pictures, stock images of models, save yourself a lot of time and get our photo manipulation free stock bundle that contains 100 premier figure stocks that are available for both personal and commercial use. Free stock images of real life models and also CG characters, 13 PNG stock 
images with the background removed, mixed genres, high print quality, and more. All you need to do is go to our website and sign up in the free stocks simply just by entering your email and click go. Now for this one, I need you to focus with me because it's uh, a little bit uh, confusing. If you are working on a forest scene or a jungle scene, wood scene, any scene that has a lot of trees, a lot of plants, grass and what so, I as a beginner and I know there's a lot of beginners, beginners that will be making this mistake that is they make all the plants, all the trees, all the grass have the same color. The work will be so boring if you do that and let me just show you an example of how I used to do it back in the days. Here's four of my very old works and as you can see in this picture I tried to have all of the uh, greens of the plants, the trees, the grass have the same color and which made it very greenish, very greeny, not realistic, boring artwork, the same thing right here. The same with this one, I made the trees, the grass, all the trees have the same uh, yellowish color. As you can see, in a lot of forests or jungle, trees, plants have different shades of um, green. Whether it's the color of the leaves itself or uh, because that there was shadows casting on that uh, tree, uh, plants or whatever. The bottom of it that if you are making an artwork, with a lot of trees, uh, species, grass, uh, and what so, then keep in mind that they shouldn't have the same shade of green. It's okay if uh, a tree have cyanish color and the grass have green color, and you get the idea there is different shades of green, and this color palette is from this picture right here. I got different colors from different trees. As you can see, this tree have uh, greenish, yellowish uh, leaves. This one have cyanish, greenish, yellowish. This one have uh, a green color that is not the same as green as this one. This one is very saturated green. This one is very desaturated green. This one has no color at all, des desaturated. And you get the idea. And the thing is, back in the day when I used to add trees uh, that are in different colors, I thought if you are going to blend two uh, plants or trees together then they should have the same color which is not the case at all and with the time when I fixed that here's the artworks that I'm making right now after I knew about that information as you can see in my new artworks they look more interesting I'm not saying I'm not saying they are the best but comparing to these ones these boring ones that have the same color look at this one like here as you can see in this artwork I have uh, plants that have this cyanish color and other plants have very bluish color and plants have greenish color and what so the same thing here and let me just show you an example from the master of matte painting himself you are talking about Dalen Cole he's a master in matte painting concept art and this is the example number one from him this is a work he did for Maleficent movie he has a lot of shades of green there we have the yellowish one we have the greenish one we have the bluish however uh, this is not the case in all artworks because sometimes if you are working on a jungle or a uh, wood scene or a forest scene that doesn't mean that this forest should have different species of trees or different species of plants sometimes you are working on an image that has the same type of trees the same type of grass and what so and that will mean they will have the same uh, shade of green or the same green color, right? In this case, as you can see, this is another work from Dalen Cole uh, and it's from uh, Maleficent and as you can see, all of these trees, all of this grass, they all have the same color, they are all in the same species but he made it interesting when he added this uh, mist pass and this bluish haze color uh, that is being uh, coming from the sky affecting this mountain in the distance. If you are making this artwork and you try to make everything green like this, again, as you can see, it's very boring. So make sure we are, when you are making an artwork that has the same uh, shade of green between the trees and the grass, then to have the mist pass added and the haze and the fog and what so just to add some interest in that artwork if you are still watching this video 
that means you're liking it so far and i'm just here to remind you to subscribe to the channel for the mistake number three is we have these two images from a new stock uh, let's compare these two images together we have this one on the right and we have this one on the left the mistake is the flat lighting that most of the beginners do in their artwork where you just start to add this flat lighting by, by sorry by just sampling the color from the background and start to paint above the model in a low flow and a lot of you do it but it doesn't look good sometimes it does when the uh, surface of the object that you are painting the work on is very flat it doesn't have details it doesn't have texture this lighting will work sometimes it works if you are making it as a bloom effect but if you are adding it as a lighting then this is not the way to do it um, sometimes if you take sometimes if you use the blend if it will restore some details just like that this is good but in most of the scenarios it's not going to be uh, working for example let's say you have a model that has the right side of her face very darkened it has it doesn't have any light and you want to paint that light then this technique of painting with the soft light and using the blend if it's not going to be working for you so what you need to do is learn how to paint the light manually and when I say that, most of you will say that you need a Wacom tablet or a pen for this. You don't need the Wacom tablet or pen to do this type of lighting. All you need to do is use a soft brush and tighten it, tight it, and with a low flow that is four or three. And of course, change the angle of the brush using the shift and the arrow keys and start to paint on the direction of the uh, area just like that and you start to paint following the shape or direction of that area and when you finish just turn it to white add a back a black background merge them together make sure it's all white okay and then use it as a mask for an exposure adjustment layer and start to add the lighting just like that and then and add a channel mixer turn it to color blender mode and start adding the color that you are looking for and then of course use blend if to restore some textures but don't always use it in the gray channel you can turn to blue channel too and use it a soft brush and make sure it's very tight it Press F5 to bring the uh, brush menu and add the size jitter. Size jitter, um, I don't know how to pronounce it, and angle just a bit. And add the scatter or scatter, I don't know how to pronounce it too. And uh, the transfer with the flow jitter or jitter, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it as well. English is very hard for me. And start to paint and of course change the uh, angle of the brush of course this is for the male hair but if you want to learn how to do the female hair I made a video before on how to uh, paint the hair stands using the uh, pen tool and you get the idea just paint it all and you will get results like that I'm not saying this is the best result that you can get but it's it is always better than this uh, flat lighting we don't want that this is bad do not do it and let's move on to mistake number four with the fourth mistake we are going to be talking about sizes a lot of beginners when they add objects human scars animals creatures what so they just use their eyes as a reference and this is wrong because i see a lot of beginners get the sizes uh, wrong in their, the, in their artworks now it is the basics that you know like for example you know that the elephant is bigger than the human but, but how big is he uh, like you need to be specific in this case not just if you make it bigger than that means you are right because you need your sizes to be correct and for our example here i'm going to use this dog this man and this background now to get your sizes right you will have to use one of those uh, pictures that you can find on google 
that shows you the size comparison between one thing and the other between the cars between the humans uh, the sizes of the animals compared to the humans and what so and you will have to use it as a, a reference you can just use the, your eyes it's not always correct and here i have this image of size comparison between this dog this human and i don't know about this animal here i don't know what they call it i just this is the uh, only uh, picture that i found and this is the size of a, a german uh, shepherd dog comparison in comparison to a human so i'm going to use it as a reference just like that this is the size of the human now i'm not going to be uh, very accurate with the size of this human compared to the road you will have to use a, a reference image for this too because i don't know if i'm correct with the human and this uh, line right here so i'm going to use this dog and make it right in his hips let's make sure they are in the same um the same position the same place sorry now this is now this is an additional tip if you are going to use a picture of two objects then make sure they are they were taken in the same degree as well now we have this human we got the size right we have this dog we got the size right now how do i know the size of the dog in co in comparison to the human if the human was let's say here and the dog was all the way sorry all the way behind am i correct like that for this you will use this technique of the perspective or the horizon line which is you will get the line tool make sure it's let's use let's make it wider is it this one yeah and let's use a brighter color let's say the green color and let's use these lines as a reference to know the perspective let's say i'm not going to be a very specific and they are collision and they collide right here so that means this is the horizon line and what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a line like this this is our horizon line and i'm going to scale it like that and i'm going to keep these two lines i'm going to keep them this is our horizon line this is where the points uh, collide and i'm going to paint some white lines right here line right here and a line right here and a line right here and a line right here okay now i'm going to i'm going to get the dog and the human sorry okay i'm going to use the human and i'm going to take this point right here to the point where the two lines collide and i'm going to take this human to stand here by the way make sure we, when you are scaling it click and hold shift and alt and i'm going to make make him stand right here and with the dog i'm going to take the point to the where the lines collide and also i'm going to take them take the dog to stand right here and like that you get the uh, sizes right use this technique if you are using an image that doesn't have a reference to uh, or lines like this to know where the li where the lines collide then you will use the point where the sky meets the uh, ground where the sky and the ground touch or collide in the picture that's a, this is your horizon line and by the way you can use the point uh, anywhere here in the horizon line just make sure that wherever you use that point the dog will get to that side as you can see so if you want the dog to be here then it's on this place and it's hiding in the trees just like that now let's go to mistake number five now this one is more of a an advice than a tip and this is i'm sure if you have watched uh, courses of photo manipulation or much painting before and you see the artist who is making the work adding the same steps over and over to every object and then you think these steps are necessary or you must add them to every object this is not the case 
like for example you add an object to your scene and then you add the hue and saturation adjustment layer to adjust the saturation and then you add the color balance uh, curves to adjust the color and then you add the levels to uh, adjust the values and you keep making these same steps to every object and i will be honest i made the same mistake in my course and i didn't mention that but i'm here to fix that and fix this mistake in general and this is if an object that fits in your scene like you add an object to your scene and it looks white in the lighting the colors the values the saturation then you don't have to add anything to it if it works then leave it as it is you don't have to add anything to it or let's say you add a object to your scene and it match the lighting the color the values but it does not uh, match the saturation then all you need to fix is the saturation you don't have to apply the same steps of fixing the value the color the lighting as if it was something that you have to do or is it a must if an object matches everything but the color then all you need to fix is the color if an object matches everything but the value then all you need to fix is the value and i am talking about this mistake because i used to make it a lot when first i started to watch matte painting courses i see the artist that i'm watching adding the same steps and when i saw that i thought this is something that i need to do in every object that i add to my works and this is what i did every time i add something to my work i always apply the same steps and what that did is it made the work uh, size bigger it made the photoshop lag and it just made everything worse in my artwork and what i have learned with the time is if something needs to be fixed then fix it if something doesn't need to be fixed then leave it as it is you don't just need to copy and adapt you are an artist you need to understand these things Treat matte painting and photo manipulation as if it was a uh, painting frame and you are painting using your uh, pencil and colors and uh, the uh, brush. Now, in a lot of scenarios, you will not find that perfect stock that fits in your artwork that doesn't need to be fixed in all of the basics, like you don't need to fix the values, the color, the saturation. This is very rare, but in other objects, you will just need to fix one thing and the other things are just correct. This is the end of this video. I hope you found this video valuable. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also follow us on our social medias. Also make sure to watch my latest video where I showed you how to make waterfalls in Photoshop. If you are looking to learn more advanced techniques in Photoshop, make sure to get my digital reloaded course. All the links are going to be down in the description. I will see you in the next video. Peace.